Hey guys, how's it going again? So, I'm going to do this run through of First John chapter 5 to finish up the first general epistle of John. And I'm just going to read through it and just share some of my thoughts on it or some of my questions that I might have. Uh, so, starting with verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. And so, um, he says a lot in this epistle, uh, you know, who is a children of, who is a child of God and who isn't, you know, what separates the saved from the lost. And, you know, a lot of it's um, loving, uh, loving your brother, uh, those who love their brother, you know, are a child of God. And those who believe in Jesus are a child of God. And there seems to be a special um, love for the, the Christian brethren here. And I said that when it talks about loving your brother in the previous chapters, I think this is just not limited to uh, Christian brothers and sisters, but to love everyone, to love you know all mankind. But also, there is also a special love within the brethren. And uh, this is talking about loving those who are begat of Christ, okay? Loving other children of God. Verse 2, by this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. And so God's commandment is to love others. And so uh, when we love God, we uh, do what he wants, and what he wants is us to love others as he has loved us. Verse 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous. Um, so, verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So we learn that we are overcomers through Christ. Whoever is born of God, whoever keeps his commandments, whoever loves him, overcomes the world. And it's through our faith in Christ. Verse 5, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? 6, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Now this is an interesting verse, that uh, he came by water and blood. And so, what does that mean? You know, that's something that I might want to look into, but I know that some people would say that the water is like in the embryonic sac in the womb or something, and uh, that might be a little too literal, or you know, it might mean something else. Um, even by Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness. Because the Spirit is truth. Not by water only. You know. I just, I really don't think that it has to do with his birth. Um, like the water in the embryonic sac or whatever. I don't, I don't think that's it. I think that's kind of missing the idea. Whatever the idea is here. Obviously, you know, he was born in the flesh. Flesh. He is the Son of God. He took on humanity, and so it's speaking of the incarnation. Um, but what is the water? Or is water and blood together supposed to be one idea? Does water have something to do with baptism? Maybe that's taking it too literally, too. Does it have something to do with the Holy Spirit? Um, it came by water and blood. Well, that's something that I'm going to look into when I do a better commentary on this chapter. But let's not get too stuck on that. So verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. And uh, we definitely see the Trinity there. Each individual person. 
and um, I think that this is a verse that a lot of the new versions have omitted that there are three that bear witness in earth, the, wa the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. So whatever the idea of water and blood was in verse 6, we see it also in verse 8, and I have to think that the same idea is being shown here. There are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. So, hmm, I don't know. Water cleanses. I'm still wondering, does it have something to do with baptism? Um, the blood. I don't know. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And so, you know, Jesus is in fact the Son of God. Oh, this thing's fallen down. <laughs> um, and the scriptures speak of that, and uh, their witness, they prophesied of Jesus. Uh, And so if people reject, you know, the gospel, they reject God. And number 11, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Eternal life. Number 12, He that hath the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son hath not life. So that's a pretty straightforward, you know, it's either one way or the other. And that's why, uh, you know, those that hate God love death, because uh, they don't have life. Those that don't have the Son don't have life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may believe on the name of the Son of God, so that you may have confidence in your salvation, right? We know that, that we can trust God's word, that God is true. His promises are kept. And if we know that he hear us, who, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we, that, that we desired of him. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped the verse there, I guess. In 14, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we've desired of him. This is what Jesus said, you know, whatever you ask in his name will be granted. Verse 16, If any man see his brother sin is sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life. For, him that's, that, for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, I do not say that he shall pray for it. And that's a very controversial verse, you know, the sin unto death. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask. And Well, a lot of people think that this might mean, you know, a sin that leads to death, um, you know, a physical death. But I think the context here we see when death is used a lot, it's always speaking of spiritual death. And there seems to be a conflict because uh, we know that you know, a Christian secure in their salvation. There's nothing that they can do to lose that because we've been forgiven. We trust in Christ. And so this, if it's a spiritual death, then people are confused because how can you be a Christian? Because he says, see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death. And, um, and again, brother could be in the context of just any man, just like neighbor. You know, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be people who are saved. Uh, or even if it was speaking of people who are saved, um, it could be people who just claim the name of Christ, you know, professing Christians who fall away, and it's talking about apostasy. Um, you know, or it could be any man, I, I don't know. I don't think that it's talking about a sin unto a physical death, it's a spiritual thing. 
Why shouldn't we pray for it? Do not say that he shall pray for it. If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. Okay. So, now is this talking about kind of like forgiveness? Kind of like how Jesus prayed for forgiveness of, uh, you know, the people who persecuted him, either the Romans or, you know, who are doing it directly or, you know, the soldiers or whatever, or the Jews who did it indirectly, um, asking for forgiveness for them, saying they know not what they do. Um, but I don't know. What's the, the sin unto death? Uh, somebody who completely rejects the gospel. Um, not sure. So, 17, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. So, and these are, this is another interesting controversial verse talking about, you know, whosoever is saved doesn't sin. Um, so does that mean they don't live a lifestyle of sin? You know, they've changed or, or, you know, they're forgiven. These are things I need to look into more. And I've looked into it a lot in the past, but uh, I need to refresh on some of this. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and that we are in him that is true, even in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So, some interesting stuff there. Sorry, maybe I didn't give a lot of insight on that, but more questions than answers. It's, I know it's a, one of the, it's a tough chapter that has a lot of people divided. And so I just wanted to go over it again just to read through it and just record my reading. And uh, I'm going to look into these more. So thanks for watching and God bless.